Hello, I'm Ken Gorman, and I'm one of the leaders here at the Loft Wesleyan Church in Hillsborough, New Jersey. And you have tuned in to Voices from the Loft. You do not know what Voices from the Loft is. It's our midweek devotional series that our gifted teachers put on each week. And it is my week to do it, and I'm so glad that you joined us. As I was praying and meditating on what the Lord wanted me to speak to you, he reminded me that we are in the midst of what we call Holy Week, from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. And we're also in the midst of a crisis with this virus, COVID-19. And the Lord wanted me to bring you the last seven sayings of Jesus from the cross. And this, I believe, shows us exactly how we can live today. So let me jump right in. I have a lot of materials to cover and they only give me 10 minutes. I could turn this into a 10 hour sermon, but they only give me 10 minutes and who would want to sit through me speaking for 10 hours? Anyway, the first point is found in Luke 23, 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And as I was meditating on this, I realized Jesus was on the cross. He just got nailed there. And he is finding it that he can forgive those people. And I don't know about you, but if I was nailed to a cross, I would not be praying for forgiveness for them. I would be praying for hellfire to be rained down on them. But Jesus shows us that we can even pray for those who hurt us, whether they deserve it or not, whether they ask for it or not. We need to forgive them. If we have an unforgiven spirit in our heart, we are hurting ourselves more than we are hurting that person. So you need to forgive that person, if I may meddle a little bit, right now, not tomorrow, not next week, not when they ask for it, but right now. The next part Jesus talks about, his next phrase, is found in Luke 23, 43. Verily, I say to you, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, Jesus, when he was crucified, he was crucified between two criminals. One of them were yelling hateful things, blaspheming, and telling Jesus things that probably weren't mentioned in the Bible, that probably is not Nice to even mention in polite company. The other cross said to the thief yelling all this stuff, Shut up! We're justly here. This man does not. Is not. And then he said to Jesus, Jesus, when you enter your kingdom, please remember me. And Jesus replied to him, Today you will be with me in paradise. And that's one thing about Easter. It's about salvation. And forgiveness of our sins, like I mentioned earlier. Here, Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise, because the thief acknowledged who Jesus was. Now, the third phrase that Jesus uttered is about relationship. It's found in John 19, 26. He said to his mother, woman, behold thy son. He said to his disciple who was there, behold thy mother. He cared for his mother to tell his disciples to care for him. And we too are commanded to care for those in need. We may have a senior in our house that has immune compromise and, and we need to go to them and help them. We may have a senior who is a neighbor who can't get out of the house. We need to go get them food, bring it to them. We may have a person who has a handicap that can't get out and mow their lawn during this time. We can go and mow their lawn. But if we don't have anybody that, we know people that we can pick up the phone and call them. Another thing we can do is we can, when we go grocery shopping, buy extra food and drop it off at our food pantry and take care of those that don't have the means like us. If we don't want to go to the food pantry, we can donate money to the food pantry to help them. And that's important because God wants us to take care of each other. Now, the next one, the next two phrases of Jesus is kind of like 
um, a little downer point. Jesus felt abandoned because we he said in Matthew 27, 46 and Mark 15, 34, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Now, Jesus had a connection with the Father from beginning of time, even before beginning of time. And at this point, he was separated because all of my sins, your sins, the world's sins, was heaped upon him. And the Bible does say that sin cannot enter the presence of God. So Jesus had that connection that he had broken apart because of our sins. And he felt it. And he also felt physical distress because, just like any of us, he felt physicalness. And he said in John 19.28, I thirst. He wants, he had a need that he needed met. And we have neighbors, like I mentioned earlier, or friends, or family members that need a physical thing met. They might need food to feed them. They might need help around the house because they can't do it. And during this time of COVID-19, people are scared. And us reaching up, picking up the phone, and calling them will help with that need. So now, the sixth phrase that Jesus said is a very important phrase. It's found in 19, John 19.30. He said, it is finished. Our sins was paid for by Jesus' death on the cross. That means not our sins today, our sins that we committed in the past, and our sins in the future. Jesus paid for it. I read a story in the New York Times um, recently about this landlord in New York City who owns 19 buildings with, I'm assuming, probably 20 to 30 apartments, even probably more. In those buildings during this COVID-19 crisis that we're in he decided to cancel the rent that is due for April for his entire tenants and that's amazing and you know what that's just a small example of what Jesus did on the cross for us he canceled our sins not just our present sins like I mentioned earlier not our past sins all our sins from past, present, and future, Jesus canceled on the cross. And I thank God for that. Now, the final one is Jesus trusted in God, where he said in Luke 23, 46, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. And Jesus and the Father are both trustworthy. If anything we can bet a dollar on, and get a 100% back, it's Jesus and God, the Father. As we look at that, if you don't know who Jesus is and can't be trusted, he can be. And it's simple, just ask him. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you are a God who hears our requests, Lord. And Lord, we, we thank you that you are trustworthy, that we can put our hope in you, Lord. I pray for those who not quite yet have that personal walk with you yet, Lord. I ask that you send the Holy Spirit to them and convict them that they need it, Lord. Just help them just say, Lord, I need you. I know you're trustworthy. Help me live for you. Help me live a life you are worthy of, of you, Lord. And Lord, as others who hear this message that know this, strengthen them, Lord. Convict them to reach out to people in their lives, Lord, that might need help. And Lord, I thank you and give you the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And I thank you for joining us. This is Voices from the Loft. And I hope you join us next week when we have another one of our gifted teachers come to you to bring what the Lord has put on their heart for you. Have a wonderful day.